Let's come back to the RDM skills for researchers. And this does sound like we're criticizing the researchers, and I'm certainly not doing that. But they don't have the resources. They, the older ones didn't have the training to do this, and they've learned it empirically, if you like, by experience and um, other people sort of helping. Hopefully, um, your own departments also have some training courses on data management, and that would be nice if, if that happens because um, I, think, I think it's something that every, every researcher, however old or young, should, should have some skills in. There are lots of training courses online. There's this mantra, and you heard about that from Jamie. It's the most well-known one, but there are others. There are definitely others. And there are training courses like this one. Now, some of them are more technical. This is very much an overarching course but you will get uh, much more technical ones uh, where Greg, for example, would go very much more deeply into your file formatting, your standards, and those sorts of things. But all of these can help um, RDM skills, but I think the call is out that there should be research data management in the university curricula for young, young scientists, for young researchers. Um, certainly, I know um, Peter and Claudia are looking to the Ocean Teach Global Academy. This, this is a course from the Ocean Teach Global Academy, and one of the sort of future thoughts is that we could contribute to or we could bring in universities to partner with OTJ to provide this sort of um, component, which would be a very nice addition, I think. Now, there's a quote there from a 2015 article, um, and I have referenced it at the back. And it's, it's actually what I would have said anyway, but at least I, I can sort of give some evidence that somebody else is thinking it, that researchers, in fact, haven't really understood how to compile metadata or cite data. They don't know, they didn't know, I should say, how to actually write a citation for their data set. And Kratz says here, even today, data citation practices are inconsistent at best, and formal data citation is rare. Now, I find that interesting in 2015, when there is so much discussion about data publication, data citation. But in 2014, there was an article, and I, this is even, well, this is rather sad, in fact, is that you now see that only 25% of journal articles tend to cite their data set. So researchers aren't actually identifying their data sets when they are publishing their article. You know, we have to start at the bottom here. We have to start at the base and, you know, and criticize them for not actually identifying, okay, Dunson, for actually identifying their own data set that they've used for the article. Dunson, you wanted to say Is something? The citation that they use sometimes lack the proper guidelines and it's difficult for the researcher to protect the data in the best possible way. For example, APA, Emily, mm -hmm. Citec mm -hmm. may have, which is probably known that they're actually having a standardized way in actually how the data should be cited. Yes, they do. And that's probably the reason why there was such inconsistency. They do, and, and we're going to come to that, and it's a good point, and we will be talking exactly about that when we talk about formats. But nevertheless, there are standards, there are formats, depending where you're publishing, but they're not even putting it in. They're not even identifying the data set. Now, uh, we're going back to this historical problem, this cultural problem of not wanting to share your data. But I think that's a rather sad percentage there, in fact. Another definition, data citation. We've looked at data publication. We've got our, our data published, and throughout this week, what you've been talking about and discussing and practicing has all been working, or is, in fact, a component of data publication. So you've been working to this end point of actually making the data publicly available and actually um, being able to cite it at the same time. So it's not a... Not a particularly detailed definition, but it's the practice of providing a formal structured reference to data sets. 
and that of course would be in the same way as you do for bibliographic references. But our main goal obviously is to utilize best practice for tracking data so that uh, there's attribution and that researchers can get um, credit for it. Now there are lots of initiatives with data citation. I mean the whole area of data is actually exploding. There's a huge amount of investigation and projects and funding going into making data available. Um, and there have been some very significant uh, efforts, in fact, global ones, where they are defining and focusing on principles, on standards, and most importantly, on, on using persistent identifiers. And the, the most obvious one that we will be talking about is the digital object identifier. Now, have, do, you any, do you all use DOIs? Do you know what DOIs are? Sue? Do you use them in any way in your work at all? Not really? Not yet? Okay, well hopefully you know, you'll start thinking about it after this course. All right. uh, uh, a group that is actually um, in the forefront, if you like, because maybe because they were the first to start bringing out principles was Force 11. And they've put down some principles which they are asking people to sign up to and at the moment I think there are over 1300 individuals, organizations, very different groupings um, have signed up to it. Um, it's a very obvious uh, goal that they're, they're trying to achieve and there's a link there that you can actually have a look at them but here are the, and I'm sorry for some of the slides, they are a bit full and that's another presentation no-no but um, there are sometimes you know you have to get everything onto one side and this is one of those times so you can see the sorts of principles that they're asking people to sign up to is there anything there that you're surprised to see or you think something is missing I think, you know, often you think of something, but then when you look at it, uh, you look under a, a general heading and find, well, yes, of course, that's interoperability, or mm -hmm. yes, of course, that's all about access. So I think they've been pretty good in, 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 in giving a, a general overview of the principles themselves, in fact. And please sign up if you agree with these principles. You as an individual or you as an organization can sign up to these. So think about that. Now there are lots of organizations working on data citation and I've listed a few of these here. You can see some really big names. Um, one of the biggest, the World Data System, for example, is, is huge. The Digital Creation Center in the UK. But one of the biggest is the Research Data Alliance, which um, Jamie mentioned the other day. And I'm really sorry about screenshots. They are not good quality, but there we are. These really are, they've only been in existence since 2015. It was uh, 2013, sorry. They were started as a core group of interested agencies and that was the um, European Commission, the uh, US National Science Foundation and the National Institute of Standards and Technology and the Australian Government Department of Innovation. Now more organizations are joining and they have a very large um, component of membership across the world and they are gradually joining. You can see now the numbers that we're, they're now looking at, 3,000 individuals, 102 countries. And they really are the leaders in research data management and data publication. So again, it doesn't cost anything to join these people. So think about it, if maybe your organization, but just think about it as something. They are really at the forefront of research into RDM. Now they do have a, a publishing data interest group and this RDA is the Research Data Alliance but 
WDS is the World Data System. And what they try to do in this publishing data group is to um, look at different aspects. And you can see all of these, obviously, as part of the data publication um, activity. But there's workflows in archiving, costs, bibliometrics, and services. Again, you can join these groups. If you're interested and you want to take part, I mean, one of the things they do require is you don't just join and do nothing. You have to be, you have to be willing to do some work towards what their goals are. But nevertheless, it does keep you up to date with everything that's happening. Of course, the RDA has produced some data citation principles. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> and this, of course, is um, how, how it's going. As I say, there's an enormous amount of work happening with um, data citation. <laughs>